Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to continue on in Unit 7 with Cities and Urban Land Use. And uh, over the last couple of videos we've been talking about this idea of the urban hierarchy. Uh, we talked about the idea of range and threshold when we were talking about uh, Christoller's uh, central place theory. And today we're going to continue on with a similar theme. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be similar to that idea. We're talking about what's called the functional characteristics of contemporary cities. And we're looking at some of the modern cities uh, that we have in our world today. And one of the things that we have to remember, if we look at things like the international division of labor, if we think about this idea of connectivity of cities, uh, we have to understand that a lot of the jobs that are being done in these cities are going to be relatively unique to that particular city. And uh, not, all of the, uh, not all of the jobs that are available within that city are going to just be servicing the people within that city. So we have to think about cities on kind of this wider economic network that we've been discussing through the concept of globalization. We've really been talking about in terms of, in terms of countries uh, in, in as far as the course is concerned, but in this case, as we're talking about what are called basic and non-basic jobs, um, you have to think about in terms of the cities and their relationship uh, to each other. So when we look at basic and non-basic jobs, basically these are just different types of jobs that are on various uh, parts of the employment sectors. And one of the things that's important about the basic and non-basic uh, jobs that are found in a city, depending on what the types of jobs are found, or, or the types of basic and non-basic jobs, it can really tell us a lot about the different types of people and also the different jobs that can be found within a particular area. Uh, jobs are going to be very important to the culture of a city because uh, depending on the types of jobs that are available, that's going to draw uh, specific types of people to that particular city. Uh, and so that's going to go a long way in helping to develop the character and the culture of the city uh, in regards to uh, you know what the, lo what the what the city itself is going to be like. Uh, so the most important jobs that are available in the city are what are called basic jobs. Now this is a little bit different than what we normally think because when we hear the term basic, typically we think maybe along the lower order uh, types of jobs. Well, in this case, when we talk about basic and non-basic, basic would actually be the higher order. Uh, level of jobs. If you think about the central place theory, that idea of, the idea of high order uh, level of jobs. The basic jobs are actually higher order. Now, uh, the basic jobs uh, do not necessarily have to be highly specialized, but typically the basic jobs are going to be the, some of the highest order, uh, with or some of the higher order within the city. And one of the ways that we look at the basic jobs is that the basic jobs are going to kind of give the city its function. They're going to provide some of the most basic characteristics of the cities because it's also going to uh, provide most of the jobs for the population uh, within the city. And it's going to create a unique set of characteristics for that particular uh, city uh, because of the types of jobs that it's providing. Another way to think about it when we think about basic jobs, uh, the basic jobs help to produce items that a lot of, most of the time are sold outside of the city and sold in other cities. Uh, so the example I have down here is a picture of the city of Detroit, uh, the manufacturing of automobiles. Uh, so obviously Detroit, you know, we think about Motor City, think about most of the jobs in the automobile industry. Uh, the majority of people are going to be middle class, uh, kind of blue collar workers. So uh, you get to think about, uh, not since that's most of the jobs that are being provided, think about the skills that are required for those jobs. Think about the demands that they're going to be for those types of workers. And that's really going to tell you a lot about the characteristic of the city. Uh, because a lot of the jobs that are uh, that are spun off of uh, those those jobs, the non-basic jobs that are spun off of the basic jobs, are going to revolve around catering to those who are working in the automobile factories. And so that's going to tell you a lot about the city. It's going to tell you a lot about the characteristics of the city. Again, the non-basic jobs are uh, in the city. They're going to be the lower order of services. So typically have lower ranges and thresholds. And the basic jobs exist almost primarily to support this, to support the infrastructure of the city. Now when I say support the infrastructure, uh, basically they, they are there to, uh, to help the city function and help the city run. And they are going to be providing the services mostly for the people who are a part of uh, the basic jobs or who have, uh, who have work in the basic jobs. So uh, the important part there is that um, the non-basic jobs uh, are going to, again, to the, the, the non-basic jobs are primarily going to be there to service those who work in the basic jobs. Another thing I meant to mention uh, is that when you look at the basic jobs, those are going to be fairly unique to that particular city. 
we look at the non-basic jobs, we're going to find non-basic jobs to be very similar in most cities uh, that we look at. Uh, so, you know, you know, I have an example there. Teachers, firemen, dry cleaners, fast food workers, gas station attendants, grocery store clerks. All those things would be a part of the non-basic uh, economic uh, sector or the non-basic jobs that are available. Now, when we look at the correlation to this idea of the urban hierarchy, the larger the city, obviously the larger the population, the more, uh, the more basic jobs there will be, and as a result, the more non-basic jobs that there are going to be. Uh, and when we look at the basic jobs in those larger cities, they are going to be on the higher order end uh, than the basic jobs maybe in some cities that are on lower on the urban hierarchy. And as I was mentioning, the basic sector is really important because it's going to define the city in many ways. Uh, if you look at, again, because of the jobs that are available, it's going to tell you something about the economic, um, uh, the, the economic situation of the city, the amount of things that the people there can, they can afford. Uh, things culturally that they would be involved in, educationally, the things that are important to them, uh, those types of things. Now, one of the important elements of the basic jobs, again, is this idea of the non-basic jobs. And, and the idea is that the more basic jobs that there are, this helps to create more non-basic jobs. So the more basic jobs you have, the more of these higher paying uh, jobs that you have, this is going to help to uh, create more non-basic jobs. And this is what is called the multiplier effect. Because you have more of these uh, higher order level of jobs, people getting paid well, they're going to go out and they're going to spend their money uh, and they are going to help to support uh, more of those non-basic jobs. And so there's that idea of the multiplier effect. And of course that can uh, potentially lead to this idea of agglomeration. And we talked about agglomeration uh, in our previous unit uh, when we were looking at economic development. And so it works very similar. So you have this idea where you know maybe you have a business as an industry leader, a uh, business that is uh, well known, well liked, uh, and it becomes kind of a force in an area. And this is become this can potentially become what we call a growth pole, where other industries that are similar to that industry leader or industries that uh, work off of that industry leader move to that particular area to pull off of the good reputation that is built by that particular industry leader. Again, Silicon Valley is a great example of that with a lot of technology industry that's moved out that way. Uh, another example of that would be Chapel Hill, North Carolina uh, as an example of a hub for medical research. Okay, it's established as a growth pole and you have, so you have this agglomeration that begins uh, a lot around the university and the medical research, but you also have all the other areas of medicine that go around with that. And then as you have a greater expansion and agglomeration in the medical field, you're going to have the development of more non-basic jobs. Uh, so again, uh, any of those things that are there to support the doctors uh, and those who are working in the medical field, uh, you're going to have more of those non-basic jobs uh, developed. And so there's obviously the potential for infrastructure problems. There's the, pro uh, the potential problem for, um, uh, for overcrowding in a particular area. Of course, the area of uh, Durham, Chapel Hill, uh, uh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and Riley, you have this situation with the megalopolis. So we know it's a very large, continuous, built-up space. Uh, and so there is that definite potential, uh, potential for the infrastructure problem. And of course, we talked also about this idea of the backwash effect. When you have these growth poles, you have this high agglomeration, especially in highly specialized areas in specific cities, there's the potential for that backwash effect. And you can go out and you can actually create these uh, particular maps on Google's Maps for yourself. And so what I did is I just uh, went and I, I created a map of ch the Chapel Hill, uh, Durham, uh, kind of Raleigh area, and you can see, you can see uh, all the different elements of the medical industry. And so I just picked a couple areas: pharmacies, occupa occupational therapists, plastic surgeons, pediatricians, hospital supply, stores, and hospitals themselves. And you can see kind of the prevalence of all these different uh, these different um, businesses of, that are within the medical field. Um, and uh, their existence kind of in this, uh, in this particular area. Um, one of the things that we're finding though, in our, especially our American cities uh, today, is that we're seeing a, a changing employment mix. Uh, because what's happening is the United States and uh, even parts of Europe, some of the more developed countries in the world, are, are undergoing a fundamental change in their economy. Uh, and the fundamental change that they're undergoing uh, is that uh, there's a big change in uh, what is the kind of the primary employer. And so in the United States, again, what we're seeing, and we talked a little about this in our economic unit, is we're changing from a primarily uh, manufacturing and industry-based economy 
uh, to a service and professional based economy. Uh, so looking more at those tertiary uh, those tertiary areas of uh, of, in, of, of pr uh, professions, sorry, of professions, and so that's going to change a lot of things. And just like we talked about the change in the nature of cities, if you have an industrial city, you know, industrial cities are centers of production. Uh, you know, large numbers of blue collar workers. Not to say that they're low, lowly educated, but you don't need as high as much of an education. Uh, typically, a high school education will do uh, well enough for you to get into a factory type of job. Uh, and so we're talking, you know, certain amounts of wages, certain types of houses, certain types of uh, leisure activities that they can participate in. And so when you move into a professional or a service-based industry, it requires more things, typically requires greater education, typically requires more money, higher paying jobs. Uh, and so what's happened is, is because this is occurring, uh, we're moving into these post-industrial cities where cities are becoming instead of centers of production they're moving back to centers of consumption it's almost that we've uh, we've reverted back to the old idea of cities where cities are cities of trade and so no longer are we looking at the development of these large industrial cities as centers of production but now we're looking at large commercial areas that are going to be uh, centers of commerce and centers of trade and centers of professions and so that's the reason I have this little picture here to kind of show you this idea of kind of the new uh, modern city, and later on in the unit we're going to talk about this idea of uh, neo-urbanism, where we've almost reverted all the way back to the original function and uh, idea of cities as as these smaller uh, communities. I think an interesting uh, an interesting element of this, or a good example of this idea, is uh, the Houston is hit campaign, and this is the idea where the city of Houston actually, I believe, last when I checked, I believe Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States. Uh, you know, Houston is trying to draw people to its city, and it had this big ad, pan ad, ad campaign going on for several years called Houston is Hip, and it's still going on today. And so basically the idea is Houston, the city of Houston is trying to draw people into their city because of the culture and the lifestyle uh, that Houston is creating. So notice there that really the idea is that Houston isn't trying to draw people based on the jobs that are available, but rather based on the lifestyle that they're creating. So trying to, to draw in the young, hip, urban professionals to be a part of their city and the lifestyle that they're creating. So this is kind of what I was uh, mentioning just a second ago. It seems like cities are moving backwards, and now they're becoming centers of trade. And uh, you know, in the United States, obviously, suburbanization is a big deal. And so what's happening now is more people in the United States are moving outside of cities. They're moving into the suburbs. Uh, and so we it's almost like we've reverted back to that old idea of the city back when it was the agricultural trading center where actually more people lived outside of the city than people lived inside the city. But of course what's happened is is because we have a greater personal mobility uh, we're able to interact with the city kind of as we feel like. And so of course in the United States one of the things that helped to uh, to move that forward um, uh, very rapidly was the interstate highway system. And we'll look at that a little bit uh, in more detail a little bit further in the unit. So what we've seen happen, uh, especially in the last 15 to 20 years or so, is moving into what we call a post-industrial society. And so now with a lot of these industrial cities, uh, a lot of the cities that were industrial cities had a hard time keeping up and were not able to remake themselves. And of course, Detroit is a fantastic example of that. You can see all kinds of great pictures. With the loss of jobs, you're going to have loss of people. And so you're going to have what this situation occur, what's called urban uh, decay. And, uh, you know, again, Detroit's a good example. Rochester, New York's a good example. Uh, here's a great uh, infographic that was made. I guess it's not an infographic, it's a map. That was made about some of the areas in the country where we're seeing uh, urban decay because of the decline in industrial jobs around the United States. Uh, and again, the important thing there is that cities have to be able to remake themselves. Uh, if they're not able to move beyond the importance of industry and move into services, then they're going to experience this urban decay. Well, I hope you found that to be helpful. I believe that's all we have time for today. Leave a comment box below if you have any, uh, leave a question in the comment box below or leave a comment and I hope to see you next time.